It's pasta time. Pasta time, ladies and gentlemen. Let me get ready. You get ready to make pasta with me. We're making pasta from scratch together. And before we start, let's do the pasta dance. Oh, no, Cleo thought you forgot them. <laughs> what did I forget? Because they were waiting for you. Oh, no, Cleo was not. Mm. I didn't forget about you. We were just organizing all the technical parts. You know, we are recording on YouTube live. We are live on Facebook at the same time, okay? So we are, uh, in, uh, you know, updating, getting better with production here, okay? Now, guys, let's do the pasta dance. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the new dance of 2022. And now we're ready to make pasta. Simplicity. Okay, all of us go to the shop to buy pasta. Very easy to do that. But did you know that it's so easy and rewarding to make your own pasta? Today we're making fresh pasta. What does it mean? That we're using eggs. Come and have a look here. We're using eggs. When you buy pasta from the shop, you normally you don't buy the pasta with eggs. You buy the pasta that is made with water and semolina. That's the dry pasta. The pasta we make today is the egg fresh pasta, which is what my grandmother makes all the time, okay? And it normally doesn't last as long and it needs to be used within a few days. Now, come here and I'll show you the ingredients. The ingredients I've got here is I've got 500 grams, I've got 500 grams of uh, zero zero flour. Uh, it's got about 12 grams of proteins. Uh, it's a um, nice strong flour, but you can use any plain flour and five eggs. So I use one egg for every 100 grams. Okay, so basically we, here we have uh, 17 ounces of 17 ounces of um, flour uh, for every was 350. You need one egg. Okay, is that right? Hope I'm, hope I hope it's right. Um, so this is all we need. We don't need salt, nothing. And what I'm going to do later on, what I'm going to do, I opened the fridge and I said, what do I have in the fridge? Okay, I don't want to make classic recipes today. I opened the fridge, I've got ingredients to use. What am I going to do? I'm going to make a sauce with one pasta by using these cherry tomatoes. See, they need to be used. They're not off yet, but you know, they, they're nice they, and soft. They're soft. I've got some garlic and I'm gonna make What's a this? I'm gonna make a pistacchio pesto. Pistacchio pesto because the pistacchio needs to be used. And I'm gonna put some chili. Yeah. The other pasta I'm gonna make, I've got some ricotta in the fridge. We're gonna do a ricotta and pecorino base sauce, you know. So that's what I've got. I've wow, got how much are we cooking today? We're cooking a lot. Look, I lost weight, okay? So I need to eat. <laughs> now, what do we do here first? We place and also I've got extra flour here next to me. I've got extra flour in case I need extra flour. This is what we do. We place the flour, just focus on uh, the bench here. Look, put all the flour there. So if, if, let's say it's only you, one of you or two of you. You don't have to use this much flour. You can just use 200 grams of flour. And you can use five, uh, two eggs. This is what we do now. We make a well. When you make the well, please keep in mind, keep in mind, okay? Because I've made this mistake before. Do not have the well too uh, thin on the side or no, don't have the well too, too weak on the side, simply because you don't want the eggs to escape from this well. Because if, does ex if they escape, it's going to be a mess on the floor, on your kitchen bench. This is what we do now. We break the egg. Uh oh, Chris is being very cheeky and saying he likes ketchup on pasta. Oh, <laughs> my friend, my friend. I've never eaten ketchup on pasta. I don't know what, what to say. But before I do that. And Jason said, ketchup, are you nuts? That's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, look, I, um, let's not comment that. <laughs> let's make uh, pasta, real pasta, the Italian way here, okay? So here we go, five eggs. Ah, <laughs> Wendy said, don't want the eggs to escape. No, we don't want the eggs to escape because I did it once when I was filming a video and the eggs went everywhere and it took me forever to clean. Now, what I, I do now... I think that happened in a live, didn't it? It did happen. Uh, the, the live was another May or something else. You know, that was the... 
Panzerotti. <laughs> now, so that you know, guys, all these recipes are on my website, vincenzosplay.com. So you can go and watch the video on YouTube, Facebook, the website. This is what we do. I use my hands. What I want to do is I don't want to see the white anymore. I want to mix the eggs and basically turn this mix. Uh, it needs to be all red or orange, whatever it is, you know? Oh, James said, mix, mix, mix. You know how you always say mix, 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 James. Mix, 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 mix. Oh, Michael asked if it's Gordon Gordon Ramsay's video, uh, recipe. Yeah, yeah, this is Gordon Ramsay. He can dream or something like this. This is simplicity at his best. He always tried to make it complicated. Food should be easy. So if it's easier for you, you can use a fork, okay? I'm going to use a fork for you so you can do this and it's easier. I don't add any salt simply because I like to put salt in my sauce. I put salt when I cook the pasta in the water, okay? So I don't need salt. I know some people like to put salt now or some people like to put extra virgin olive oil. You can do it. Why not? In my opinion, you don't need it. But if you do want extra virgin olive oil, go for it. Jeremy said, how long is this going to take? No, no time. Look, it is done. Okay. Are you guys making pasta? I want to know who is making pasta with me right now. I want to know that. Please let me know Gordon. how many of you are making pasta. Sergeant Spitfire, Gordon, tap water instead of pasta water. <laughs> oh, my God. And I hope God the Rims is watching this video. <laughs> now, I'm going to add the flour a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time here. Okay, because don't forget, we don't want the, the edges here to break. We don't want the egg to escape. So we add the flour a little bit at a time, and we try to thicken this cream from the eggs. So you've had a few um, people ask the same question. Everyone's try saying, why don't you whisk the eggs in a bowl and then put it into the well instead that's of mixing it while it's That's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, why not? I mean, I use, I do, uh, this is the old school. That's how my nonna does it. But you are... Very smart with your idea, so yes, you can do that. Yeah, we've just never done it that way, have and we? And that way, you actually prevent um, the eggs to crack in there, so you don't have any... Oh, the shell. The shell, so it's a very good idea, yeah, you do it. I'm I guess just, we're just used to this way. I'm just used to this way, yeah. But I do have to say, sometimes you can find the egg shell in there, so it is a good idea what you're doing. All right, see, so yeah, as you can see, it needs more flour, but it's getting thicker. This is getting thicker. See, it's escaping here. Look. It's escaping, it's escaping, it's escaping. It's escaping. escaping. It's escaping. <laughs> look, look, look. See, it's escaping. Look. So I block it so the, the, the heck doesn't go everywhere. It's escaping. Look, Suzanne, look. <laughs> look, look, look. Where are you trying to go, baby? <laughs> Where are you trying to go? Oh, yeah, no, a few people. You. Yes, my accent is definitely Australian. I'm sure you can hear it. We're in Sydney, not Perth. <laughs> I want to go to Perth. Um, mm. Oh, is it okay to use a stand mixer? 100% you can use it. Do not use the blender because what the blender does, it kind of, I know lots of people like to use a blender, but the blender kind of ruins the, the, the dough. I mean, it doesn't need the dough the way it should be done. It really ruins the texture. Yeah, it kind of creates like a spider web inside the, the dough mixture. It's too rough, you know. Instead, you use the stand mixer or your hands. And the dough is more delicate, you know, it's, um, you create the gluten. So the stand mixer is actually a great choice. When I make more than half kilo, when I make like two kilos of flour, I always use a stand mixer, hey Suzanne? Yeah, exactly. And it's great. When I do cooking classes and I have to make lots of dough, I use a stand mixer and it's the best. It does the job for us. But like I said, I'm old fashioned and I like to follow my grandmother's recipe. So this is what we do now. We start kneading. We start kneading the dough. <laughs> when will you add the parsley? We've got some very oh cheeky followers today. What's going on today? <laughs> parsley to the pasta. Well, you can put parsley. Why not? You can put spinach. Yeah. You can put beetroot. You can put basil. You can put anything you want. So many people are saying how many of their recipes that, how many of your recipes they've been making recently. Gnocchi, stuffed shells. Oh, yeah. Thank you. And they're from all over, New York, Long Island. Oh, you guys, where are you, where are, where are you watching from? Please tell Czech us Republic. in the comment. Czech oh, Republic. Wow. It's very late in Czech Republic now. Oh, cheeky, cheeky. When can I put in the pineapple? <laughs> <laughs> pineapple pasta. That's new. 
Um, so please make a video with pineapple pasta so I can react to that. <laughs> What's a good dish to impress my wife? Wayne's asking. <laughs> mm, I guess every dish can impress you. But you know what I made last night, Wayne? I made ricotta gnocchi. They're in the fridge now. You can show us any if you want. Oh, that's Here okay. It's <laughs> all right. And it took me 10 minutes to make them with a beautiful tomato sauce. Mm, your wife will be very happy. <laughs> now, this is how I like to do my, uh, knead my dough. Colombia. Forward. Hola, Colombia. Como estas? Forward and back. Forward and back. Forward and back. Forward and back. Okay, I do this. Then I turn the pasta this way. And I do the same. Forward and back. Forward and back. Forward and back. Forward and back. Forward, back. Forward and back. Okay, this is the movement I like to use because it, I've got big hands. It works very well with me. Basically, the movement we're doing right now, the moisture from your hands is going on the dough, which helps to soften it. To soften the the dough. We are combining all the ingredients. When do we stop kneading? We stop kneading when the dough is moist, when it's nice and smooth, and when the flour disappear from the kitchen bench. Okay, we don't want to see the flour. I want you to ask any questions now, please. One of the questions that people normally ask is, what do I do if my dough it's too too hard. What if my dough it's very hard, it's not soft? What do we do? What we do? We go to the sink, you put some water on your hands, just on your hands, so they're nice and wet, and then you go back to the dough and knead the dough. But my recommendation is keep kneading the dough because it will get softer. The more you do it, the softer it will get. As you can see, it's not taking long. How long is it taking so far? Five minutes? How long have I been kneading the dough? Five? Oh, yeah, probably. Look at this. Look how clean this is. Look how clean this is. And now it's time to Yes, it's just concentrate. flour and eggs, Peggy. How long can you save dough before you cut it? Oh, I can say in the fridge. Look, it's fresh. Normally, I don't keep it more than a day. Um, I would say maybe a few hours. It will get nice and you can keep it in the fridge for a few hours. I've never done that to be honest. I always make the pasta on the spot, but I believe you can keep it for a few hours. Even the day after should be okay. But what happens is you will see that after 24 hours, the dough starts to get darker and, and you don't want that. that. That's the egg basically gets, uh, it goes off, you know. So Brent asked if you like making pasta. I love making pasta. So of what, I, what I was saying before, it's uh, it's this. What I was saying before is this. We go to the shop all the time. We buy pasta. Sometimes I see people buying very poor quality pasta, which makes me a little bit upset, simply because we don't eat pasta every day. Maybe I do, but you don't. So when you buy pasta, try and buy good quality pasta, because the good quality pasta, even though you pay a few dollars extra, you have the right amount of proteins, the fiber, the, you know, the pasta is done the right way, and it's better for you, for your family, for your digestion, you know? Um, so I always go for the better brand, and I will do a video to show you what brands to buy. Uh, but fresh pasta for me, it reminds me of when I was little, when my grandmother, when my nonna used to make pasta. She was surrounded every Sunday morning after the church. She would have her friends to go over, Nonna would make pasta, and I'm talking about pasta for 30 people. And I would be there watching my nonna and her friends gossiping, making pasta together. And that was priceless. It brings people together, okay? Let's go back to the dough. Now, my dough, as you can see, it's a little bit, not, I don't want to say it's beautiful, it's perfect. It's just a little bit sticky, like, just a little touch sticky. So what I do, is I'm going to put a little bit of flour, not much, just a little bit of flour there. Okay, not much. And now I'll finish it. But my, my dough is done, guys. So many people have been making your um, carbonara. Heaps of people oh on my. Facebook and YouTube are commenting. 
and saying it came out just perfect. We should do a, a nice a live carbonara. Yeah, of course. Let's do a live before Christmas. But let me tell you guys, I've got a new carbonara video coming up soon. There is a new carbonara video. Why? Do you change how you make it? Yes, because oh, the carbonara, no. carbonara evolved so much over the years. Still the same ingredients, same, te same technique. But since it was created, it evolved so much, okay? It doesn't mean you put peas or you put cream fresh, like Gordon Ramsay. But it evolved. And I'm about to release a new recipe in two weeks' time. So stay tuned. All right, this is the dough. Come on, have a look, guys. Come on, have a look. This is the dough. It's nice and smooth, as you can see. I can do better, of course, but we are live. So it's nice and smooth. What we need to do now is we need to cover this so it doesn't dry up. So cover the dough and we wait about 10 minutes or even 20 minutes before we start making the pasta. Why do we wait? We wait because we want the dough to rest. We want the gluten to be created and that will be easier for, for us to stretch the pasta. So at least 10 minutes. If you want to wait 20 minutes, go for it. In the meantime, I'll show you what to do next. Perfect. Wash your hands. No. <laughs> So we, let's have a look at these ingredients again for how you're making the different types of pasta later so everyone that just joined in can see. So what do we have here? This is what we just found in the fridge. So we found pistachio well, pistachio that needs to be used because we had, we bought this pistachio a few weeks ago. A little ago. while ago, yeah. yeah. Yummy. And cherry tomatoes to make a fresh sauce you're going to yeah. do. Some and garlic. Some garlic and pecorino over here. So how many different types of pasta are you making, my gosh? Look, I think I'm going to make some spaghetti, make some fettuccine, I can, I can tell you how to do with ravioli. Basically, this base is this is the base of any fresh pasta that you want. Apart from gnocchi, you don't need this for gnocchi. Can you have a look at this trays too? The trays, the trays yeah. So we've got the trays ready here. So basically to prepare your pasta, before you prepare your pasta, just line a couple of trays. doesn't matter what types of trays they are. Um, with some baking paper and so then you can let you, as you cook as you make your pasta you can leave it on there to rest with some flour oh, oh. even in a, even in a live you're being um, nice and tidy this is interesting yeah I like to keep my, my kitchen clean okay now what about the myth of adding sugar to tomato sauce mm, guys I like to use good tomatoes I'll give you an example okay if I make a sauce I like to use San Marzano. I use San Marzano tomatoes. They're beautiful from the um, near Amalfi coast. They're sweet. You don't, need, you don't need sugar. You need to use natural sugar. The sofrito is the most important thing for your sauce. So what do you do? You basically need to blend the carrots, which is sweet. The carrots, you blend the carrots. You cook the carrots first with extra virgin olive oil. Then you add the sauce. The carrots bring the sweet flavor that you need to the salt. Do not put salt, uh, sugar. What do we do now? Now, I'm not going to wait 10 minutes the same, so I'm going to make the pasta now. In the oh, meantime, okay. I've got the water Do you want to prepare any of your sauces while we are waiting for the pasta to yeah, rest? I've got maybe. the water here boiling, okay? We're ready to cook the pasta. Um, so what we do now, you want me to make the sauce? Well, I don't know. You, you don't, you have to, your pasta has to rest. You can't be naughty okay. and not let it rest. You are right. I can't, um, yeah, I can't make this. <laughs> well, look, this, this is how simple this is, okay? Yes, that's right, Gaetana. One egg per every 100 grams of zero zero flour. Exactly. Ciao, Gaetano. Here I am eating Taco Bell, watching an Italian make pasta. Oh, my God. Oh, no. I never had Taco Bell. I don't know what to say. <laughs> well, this is what we do now, Taco Bell friend. Come here. So this is basically what we do, okay? Now. This is not a classic dish. It's a recipe I've just came up with. I opened the fridge and I'm coming up with this recipe. So to make a pesto with pistachio, very straightforward. You put as much pistachio as you want. You got pistachio there. You put some extra virgin olive oil. And nothing else. Okay. Now what we do is we blend it. Some extra virgin olive oil, it's a bit dry. Okay, and here we go. You 
I'm going to look inside. Naughty, naughty. See? Take some heavy cream and make carbonara. Clayton. Oh, my God. Clayton, what are you telling me? What are you, what are you saying, Clayton? <laughs> look at this. Can I see inside? Yeah, come and look inside. How creamy this is. This is beautiful. It's stuck your face for me. Yeah. It's one of the best. So you don't put any cheese or anything in that? No, 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 pickle no, no the pistachio is already very strong in flavour, you don't need much. I guess it would take away the flavour. Yes. Perfect, I think we got it. Okay, we have it. Okay, now. Do you... Um, you salted or unsalted pistachio? Oh, Un unsalted. I think it's unsalted. Yeah, unsalted. It, you know, if you salt it, it's fine. Okay, here we have it. Here we got the pistachio cream. Come have a look. Yeah. Come have a look. This pistachio cream will be the sauce of our pasta today. Oh my God, Susan, actually want it. Yeah. Can Sebastian eat this? Yeah. Um, probably just needs to be to blended sure a pistachio. little bit more mm, for, okay. for a toddler or Maybe it's not safe bug. yet. We have a one and a half year old boy. He eats everything we make, which is fantastic. It makes life easier. And here we go. That's the cream, pistachio cream. Yeah. Maybe now, you should try it. Yeah, why not? I'll use my fingers, okay? No, no, use a spoon. I mean, you're at home, but. <laughs> oh my God, I'm live. Okay. If I was not live, I was going to eat it with my finger. But okay, we are live. Mm. Yeah. I love pistachio. I like it. I love extra virgin oil. What more do you want? Oh wow, made we've got tanyaki tonight. Hey, yeah, look, look what they have here. Yeah, we have some in the fridge, don't we, from now, yesterday. If I want to make the sauce, just with my sauce I made yesterday, that's easy. Pasta, I mix with the sauce, easy. Yeah, I've got some gnocchi I made here last night. Look, look. Yum. And we got the gnocchi. We have uh, lots of pasta for lunch. If you want to make another sauce, we can do ricotta and butter, we can do ricotta and pecorino, we can do that later, okay? Now, All right, what's tomatoes. next? Cherry tomatoes. Get a knife. <laughs> Gaetano said, my boy used to eat everything when he was a toddler. Yeah, we've heard that things can change, so in the meantime, we'll just enjoy, enjoy. his palate. <laughs> Look, we just cut cherry tomatoes enough. Like I said before, these cherry tomatoes have been in the fridge for a while, they need to be used. So we've got two different types of cherry tomatoes. They're very nice and ripe, very soft, and they're gonna be perfect for this pasta, okay? This is big, so I can cut it into four. Mm. What these cherry tomatoes are gonna do, they're gonna release the juice, which is going to be mixed with the pistachio pesto, and then combined with the pasta. I think I'm going to serve this with fresh fettuccine, Susan. Yum. Are you happy with that? Definitely. I feel like making fettuccine. Okay. Is it sauce or gravy? Oh, <laughs> I, I think it's sauce. What do you call it? Gravy or sauce? I call it sauce. Definitely. Where, what do you call it in your country, whatever you are? Sauce, gravy. Oh, here we got the garlic. We got the garlic here. Do you guys like to cook with garlic or not? Lots of people in USA love to use garlic. Um, I like to use just enough garlic, Suzanne. Not too much. Just enough. Just enough. We always use a little bit. So I can kiss you. Yeah, of course you can. <laughs> of course you can use baby plum tomatoes, some marzanos for sauce. Anything, anything. This is what These we have in the, the plum fridge. Tomatoes. This is what we have in the fridge, and this is what we use. Honestly, I've got zucchini in the fridge. I can't replace. I don't know. We stuck it with zucchini or. Um, just be creative. Okay. Gravy requires flour. Sauce is anything but, but we, may require flour. Make the sense. sauce now. Let's make it now. What's well, nice? The pasta is resting a little bit. Okay. What I like to do is I like to crush my garlic. Okay. I like to crush because it gives extra flavor. What we do here. I can is, smell that garlic already. Yeah, it's very strong. Mm. Here's what we do here. Can you see now? Oh no! Just close that. Thing. Close it. <laughs> Much better. Extra virgin olive oil. And just be generous with the top quality extra virgin. This one is an extra virgin olive oil from the region of Umbria. Very nice. Now I crush my garlic, okay? The stove is on a medium heat, not too strong. We don't want to burn the garlic. 
Okay, here we go with the garlic. <laughs> Someone spotted Vegemite in our fridge. That's for me. Don't worry, Vincenzo doesn't like it. <laughs> to be honest, I ate Vegemite for the first time last year, and I don't mind it. But oh, you, had it you had it on Italian hard bread, the biscotto. Yes, that was actually two years ago. I don't <laughs> it mind was. it now. I have it every now and then. It's not my favorite, but it can be eaten. Vegemite. What's Vegemite, Suzanne? Tell everyone. <laughs> it's a spread that you will not miss if you have never tried it. <laughs> <laughs> you love it. I do like it. I haven't had it actually for a little while. All right. The garlic now, we just spread the garlic. What I recommend is, here is pasta water, but we don't have pasta in there. So this is just normal water. What we do, we get some water, put in there. This avoids the garlic to burn. This simple trick, just a little bit of water will avoid the garlic to burn because you don't want to burn the garlic. <laughs> okay, you said Vegemite, yuck. Yes, okay. I'm eating it. <laughs> oh, lots of, um, lots of friends watching from the Philippines. Oh, wow. Salamat. Salamat, Philippines. How are you? The Philippines. We have to go to Boracay. No, we go to Palawan, Suzanne. Palawan is a beautiful island in the Philippines. All right, I think what we can do now, the garlic is going to cook pretty fast. And what okay. we do now, we can add the cherry tomatoes in there, okay? As soon as it starts to sizzle, as soon as you can see the sizzling in there, we can add the cherry tomatoes. Do you guys like to cook your garlic? Do you like, you like to cook garlic? I believe you do. Here we go. We've got the garlic is sizzling a little bit. Now we add the cherry tomatoes in there. Portugal, Palawan, Israel, Texas. Oh my goodness. Oh my God, Portugal, obrigado. Brazil, make love to the garlic. Let's make love to the garlic. We want the cherry tomatoes and garlic <laughs> to make love together. Who said that? <laughs> we want them to make love together. Yeah. And that's it. That's what we do. Now, we let it cook. Let me your meat and let's go and make pasta. Come on. Oh, that was a good um, tip. Basically, if someone uses the, sorry, I missed your name, but uses a cheese grater to um, cut up the garlic, like just rubs yeah. against, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's basically like what I do with this, but yeah. you do it the, the manual way, which is more hands-on. Now, look at the pasta. Look at the pasta. The pasta is more relaxed. The pasta has been resting. It's more relaxed. Oh, stuck a little bit. The pasta is softer, it is softer, and what we do it's now, great. which looks fantastic, I want to show you the inside, so I cut a little bit, let's see if the gluten was created, see the gluten is created, can you see oh, that? Oh wow, looks awesome. We created the gluten, and that's what we want. You made a lot of pasta. Yeah, Suzanne. <laughs> I'm going to have pasta in the freezer now for a while. So a couple of people have asked, can you actually freeze the dough? never done it before. Well, we normally make the pasta and then freeze it. Yeah, I don't know what to say. Yeah. It's going to be good. But this is what we do now, guys. This is where the magic begins. This little piece of dough here now needs to be turned into pasta. Pasta machine is here, okay? And I recommend everyone to buy a pasta machine. What we do here, come and have a look at the pasta machine. The pasta machine has different settings. Move that. Pasta yeah. machine has different settings, okay? Okay. Now, wide and then you go more... Um, thin wide we start from the widest setting because the pasta is very thick and needs to go through and then slowly slowly we go to the thinner side okay to the thinner part now this is what we need to do guys come and have a look flour on machine on the machine okay the flour is your best friend flour doesn't get the pasta to get stuck to the machine you don't want to stuck the pasta on the machine. Okay? You want to eat the <laughs> don't pasta. Get it. <laughs> and now you put flour here. Look, you put flour a little bit on the pasta. Um, and don't sorry. be scared of using too much flour because the flour eventually will disappear when you cook it in the salt, in the in the water. Now flatten the pasta like this. Flatten it. This is something I want to make sure you understand. If you put the pasta in like this, your pasta will be very long and thin. If you put the pasta in like this, it will be nice, thicker, shorter, yes, but thicker, okay? So I will do that. Don't forget pasta, water is your best friend. Gordon Ramsay left the group. <laughs> oh no, Gordon, I'm sorry. <laughs> Doris just asked, um, she's allergic to pistachios, what is a good substitute? 
You can use any nut. Yeah, you don't need to use any nut. You don't even honest. need to use You don't use need nuts. to use nut. No, I'm just using pistachio because it's in my pantry. I don't know what to do with it. And, and that's what I'm doing. But you can use anything. So this is what we do now. We fold enough. We fold this enough. And we put it through the machine again. We go through the machine again. And here we go. When making pasta for a okay. family. Now, from number seven, from the white setting, come up here. Oh, from okay. the white setting, we're going to go to the thinner setting, number six. So my machine goes from number seven, goes all the way to number one. And what we do now, we pass, the, we pass this through again, number six. That's it. Oh, beautiful. And what we do now, we fold it again. The reason why we fold is because we want to let the hair out. Perfect. We do number six again. Watching from New York. Hey, New York. Good New Italian York. restaurant. New York. Where's Uncle Roger? Maybe he can try this without Auntie Liz. Hi. He needs to come, Uncle Roger. Oh, Puyo. Aiden, where's Sebastian? Oh, he's at daycare today. <laughs> We miss Sebastian him. He this. just started and he'll love this when Sebastian he gets home. Love it. <laughs> this is what we do now. Look, number five, I went down in uh, in the settings, it's thinner. And look at this pasta. Look how beautiful it looks already. Look how beautiful, oh, too much flour. Look how beautiful it looks. Looks great. Mm -hmm. The eggs are really good too. You can see yeah. from the color. From number five now, we go to number four. So thinner and thinner, okay? Now, what do you do if your pasta is a bit sticky? You put flour on, a little bit of flour. Whoops. Flour is your best friend. And this is what we do now, okay? We... Love your food, you are great. <laughs> oh, thank you. Can you use the same technique for ravioli or tortellini? Yes. You basically, this dough is the base for ravioli, for tortellini. That dough looks great. For any pasta. New Zealand, Scotland. Oh wow, Scotland. Oh, what time is it? Very late in Scotland now. Ciao a tutti. Saluti da California. Ciao California. California, baby. Oh wow, look how long it is. Looks great. Now, we're only on number three. And I'm going to check one thing. Okay, I put some flour on so it doesn't get stuck to the machine. Can you see my fingers here? Not yet. You can't see my fingers, can you? Not yet. So basically, I think it's okay the way it is, but I want to make it a little bit thinner. So we go to number three. Let's see if we can get it thinner. And longer. It's nice and soft. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. And it's the first one I made, okay? Don't don't judge the first one. Never judge the first one. Let's do it again. My nonna did it with flour and eggs. Looked like a volcano on yeah. the table too, because they always made so much. Following your tiramisu recipe today to eat tomorrow night. Oh, yum! I love tiramisu. I wish I had tiramisu in the fridge. And look, look at this pasta, guys. Look at this pasta. The pasta is done. You can Looks see great. my fingers. And well, just see. You want it, You don't want it to be too thin. No, you can see. It. What I suggest now to do, so it's safer. What we can do now, we can put some. A little bit of flour on top. Love your cooking lives. Hello from Vietnam. Hi, gammon, Vietnam, gammon, gammon. Wales, UK, almost midnight here. Love the videos. I like to say thank you in every language. Come on, challenge me. Where are you from? And I'm going to try and say thank you in your language. Come on, challenge me. My dad makes this really nice basil pesto sauce. Oh wow, Adriano's online. His um, nonna was from Sulmona and she made pasta too. Hey, good Abruzzo says a nonna makes good yeah. pasta. I'll tell you the story of pasta next time. But here we go. Here we go. See, I've got a little bit of flour so the pasta doesn't get stuck to the machine. And now it's time for us guys to make the fettuccine. Got some pasta in there, look. Where are you going, pasta? Where are you going? Okay, come guys, look what we do now. You move this. Is it setting here? For Christmas, buy a pasta machine. Let me Good tell idea. You. Get a pasta machine if you don't have it. And now we make tagliatelle. Here we go. Here we go. Very long. Oh, it looks good. Yeah, that's good. And here we go. Oh my God, it's so long. I need to cut it in half. 
<laughs> oh my god, oh my god, look how long this is, isn't it? And here we have a fettuccine. Looks great. Mamma mia, mamma mia, look. Mamma mia, I need to put more flour. Greetings from Stuttgart, Philippines, my goodness. Look at that, look at that, look at this, look at this fettuccine, look. Paris, India. Okay, Paris, merci. Namaste, India. The Philippines, salamat. Guten Tag von Deutschland. Guten Tag. <laughs> Netherlands, Kentucky. Oh, wow, someone has three pasta machines. You're Look lucky. At that. Look at that. Now, we don't want the pasta to get stuck. So you put flour Ooh, everywhere. Polish. Then cool your pollen. <laughs> you, put, you put flour everywhere. So you put flour everywhere. You don't want the pasta to get stuck. You don't want it to get stuck. So the flour is your best friend. You do this. This is only one of the one of the options I'm showing you, you know, to do this. You don't have to do this. The next batch I make, I show you a cleaner way to store the pasta, okay? Now, what we do with this? With this? Add more flour. Add more flour. How tall is Vincenzo? Very tall. <laughs> <laughs> and we place the pasta here. How tall are you? Six foot four. Six, six foot three. Or three? Six foot, yeah. And we do want Looks to great. cover the pasta. Oh, with, so you cover it with a tea towel? Yeah, we do need to cover it, Suzanne, because otherwise it dries up. And if it dries up, it's not good. And if you've got a non nurse tea towel like this, it's the best. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> what's happening with the cherry tomato here, Suzanne? It smells good. I can smell the garlic in it. Hmm. Yeah, well, I just made. It's probably enough for me. Okay, still going, still going, still going. All right, let's get, let's make another batch. Okay. Anymore Whoa, where did you go? More countries. I want to <laughs> say hello. Parts. I want to say thank you in different in different languages. Come on, where Wait. are you guys from? A couple of questions. Um, when you cook the pasta, how do you stop it from sticking to each other? Uh, you put flour at the beginning, but you mean um, fresh pasta, yeah? Where you put flour so they don't get stuck to each other. All the Italians in America are under five foot seven. <laughs> oh wow. Actually, you're the tallest in your family. Vincenzo's yes. great grandfather was very tall, but everyone else is. Oh, your dad's still quite tall. Yeah, yeah, it's what is it? Five point nine. Yeah. Five foot nine, probably. So which yeah, city is Vincenzo yeah, but... originally from? Pescara. Pescara in Abruzzo. All Here right, what's happening now? Here we go. We make another batch of fettuccine, and then we make the spaghetti. And I also go. Maybe we can swap spots. We also go through the ravioli technique, so we can. And then we do another video how to make ravioli. So this is the widest setting, okay? Wide. And what we do, we fold. Fold enough. And we do this again. Everyone's sharing how tall they are now and where they're from. <laughs> <laughs> where are you from? Where are you from? I want to know where you're from, so I can say thank you in your language. I'm a Texas Italian and I'm six foot tall. Hey, lots of Italians live in Texas. I've got lots of messages from Texas lately. Um, I didn't know that. I need to visit Texas. Now we go thinner. Because of you, I made my oh, first game. ever cacio e pepe. I oh, think we need wow. to do a bit of a classics um, live. Like Let's, do, Let's do it. Cacio e pepe. Hey, guys, what if we, we make a book? Would you be interested to buy a book? A cookbook, yeah. A cookbook? We haven't made it yet, but what if we make one? How interested are you? Uncle Roger hates Gordon Ramsay now. <laughs> oh, thank well done. Well done, Uncle Roger. <laughs> okay, and here we go. I would def I would so buy a cookbook. Yes, please, some classics. Come and visit Texas. So we live on a ranch. I'd buy it. Yes, a cookbook. Okay. I will buy two, said Keith. I would buy a book. Okay. So, in other words, get to work, Suzanne. <laughs> get this book. So, Suzanne is the writer in the family. And if we have a book, it's thanks to Suzanne. If we don't have a book, you have to blame her. Oh, gosh. <laughs> North Dakota is directly north of Texas. Because of you, I make my Alfredo pasta with the right fresh ingredients. And is it better? Be honest. Is it nicer? Be honest. Is your Alfredo better now? With the right ingredients? Make the book. Gordon cracks me up, but you are top. Okay, so even every, in other words, everyone's buying a cookbook at the moment. So that's good to hear. But <laughs> we don't have it yet. <laughs> but we will. Thank oh. you for the gotcha gnocchi recipe. I did it with mushroom sauce. Oh, yum. Suzanne, we have to make this cookbook. Send your cookbook to Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know what? He never replied That's actually to my a good messages. Idea. I we hope he will it. reply one day. Let's go to number four. Well, you know, he can cook well, but he doesn't know how to cook Italian food. What can I do? So if you don't know how to cook some, some food, just don't go online and share recipes. You know, you can't be good at everything. I wish I can cook like he does, you know, but I don't. So I only share the recipes that I'm good at. Oh no, everyone's getting upset with me. Can't believe you don't have a book. Get busy. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we do tours in Italy. We do events. We do, you know, YouTube videos, Facebook videos. It takes forever to edit the videos. You know, it's a, it's a, lot, it's a lot of work. Man. We work eight days a week. And the book basically is going to... We're not going to sleep anymore because of the <laughs> book. But we will do it. We will do it. I spend so go. much time in the kitchen trying to make Italian food because of you. That's what Jane said. That's so nice. Thank you, James. I wish I could give you a hug. No, it was Jane, not Jane. Oh, Jane. Sorry, Jane. Sorry, Jane. Have you watched... Good, we go. Good Mythical Morning. They recently did a Chinese... What is, oops, I missed that comment. Sorry. There we go. Look, oh this is what I we do now, it. guys. We put flour here at the bottom. Place the pasta on top. Now we put flour on top. And I'll show you what we're going to do now with this tagliatelle. Here we, we do a more professional folding technique. So here we go. We professional kind of folding when technique. When I say professional, <laughs> that's more like a shop. We make the tagliatelle, like before. Lots of friends from the Philippines. Do a cookbook. Just wanted to say thank you for making me discover my passion for cooking. Everyone loves my matrishana and I learned it from your video. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And this is what we do now. Look, we put... Looks so good. We do that. Fancy, fancy. Oh, my hands are too big. <laughs> <laughs> you just twisted it too many yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. That's what you do. I put love cooking more on. because of you. Put flour on. The passion you have for cooking is the reason I watch. These comments are so lovely. Thanks, guys. It means all your support means so much, and it's really genuine. You know, Vincenzo has a really strong passion. <laughs> you didn't put the flour early enough. Yeah, no, <laughs> has, <I didn't>. a, <laughs> has a really strong passion for food, you know, and it's in the family, so we love it. We're so lucky to be able to share it with you every day. Oh, Greece! Everyone wants you to say hello, hello, hello in Greek. Oh, hello in Greek. Uh, F hello in Greek. Hello, <laughs> Karisto. <laughs> yeah, I didn't put. See, I didn't put too much flour before. And now you're in trouble because you I'm tried to twist it first. So yes. don't do that. What not to do? What not to do? What not to <laughs> do? I didn't trouble. put enough flour before I cut the pasta. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the mistakes we guys we made. all of us can make mistakes right? it's, it's still coming apart though my gosh it's long show us how long Actually, it is i'm live how long it is i mean this fettuccine now became spaghetti <laughs> <laughs> it looks still well, looks good though look yes the beauty of being live exactly aussie watching from aman in a hot kitchen oh, wow oman hello vincenzo you must come to portugal obrigado yes I want to come to Portugal. I follow a little bit Portuguese. Every time I twist it into a nest, it sticks. Okay, Angelo, so don't do what Vincenzo did. Yeah, oh, look. So okay. all you have to do is just add the flour first, right? You just yes, add the flour and then do it. <laughs> but I'll do it again. Let's do the nest again. Okay. Let's do the nest again. <laughs> Let's do the nest again. Okay, here we go with the pastas. I think this is ready for you us to cook. Good. So we can cook them. Uh, now I'm going to make spaghetti, okay? Okay. Now, oh my gosh, this smells divine. This is ready. This is basically ready. Okay, so I'm gonna put it on a, on a low heat. But this is this cherry tomato base. It's ready. Let's make the spaghetti from scratch now. Spaghetti from scratch. It is important that we use the flour. Okay, I keep saying it, but I didn't do it. So flour at the bottom. Flour at the bottom. This is so nice. What is that? The part, the dough looks really yeah, it's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful dough. And that's thanks to you because you told me to wait. <laughs> I was going to do it straight away. Your mistake gives me more confidence. <laughs> uh, you know, we all make mistakes. Oh, it's fine. That's we'll... what cooking is about. Yeah. I rediscovered loving to cook thanks to your videos. Now my pasta makes love to makes love to what? I miss that. <laughs> make love when you eat pasta. 
Important question. As I am writing from the link of my wife, we live in the Caribbean and recipes are hard to adapt due to heat. How differently should we be doing it? Oh, well, it's, I guess it really just depends on the recipe. Look, let me it? tell you, it is hot in here, so the heat can, can really make an impact. Um, so air conditioning does help, but it's tricky. Sometimes it can actually ruin the dish, the air conditioning. But yeah, if it's hot, look, it's hot here. We're in Australia and, you know, in summertime, it's very hot here and still manage to do the recipe, you know. But you just need to feel it with your hands. That's what I say. You don't need to change the recipe. You just need... You don't need to change the recipe. You, need, you just need to feel it. You need to fill your food. Gordon Ramsay, no, what are you doing? <laughs> Remember the garlic. Just a joke. Huh. And the cream fresh. A few people have asked um, how often you eat pasta. Well, I, when I was in Italy, I used to have pasta every day for lunch. But now with the busy life that we have here in Australia, it's impossible to have pasta every day. We probably have it like two, day, two times a week. Maybe two times a week. Two times yeah. a week now, yeah. I used to do more than that. We normally have um, pasta. We like to have meat once a week. We have seafood once a week. Hey. We vegetarian. Everyone's co commenting on the mess, and you. someone said that your nonna would pull your ears off if she saw it. Where's the mess? mess? I'm trying to be so clean. Where's the mess? <laughs> Maybe I'm not clean enough. Here we go. Okay, this batch, like I said before, is going to be perfect. I'm going to make the best nest you ever seen in your life. And I'm going to do it with spaghetti, which is more difficult. You better have enough flour this time. I hope I do. A messy cook right. is a good cook. Here Prove go. me wrong. Absolutely. Here we go. Flour, put enough flour, please. Oh, let me stretch one more time. Do you prefer the hand crank or KitchenAid attachment? No, we've never used the KitchenAid attachment. We have a KitchenAid, we do but have it, we but... never, never use the KitchenAid because I actually prefer a different brand. Um, but um, I like the pasta machine, old fashioned. All right, like we said before, guys, enough flour, please. We plant your flour, okay? Because we're making spaghetti now. Nonna has left the building. And the spaghetti. <laughs> Nonna oh. got upset with your mistake. Oh, of course. Yeah. Nonna always gets upset. All right, enough flour. Enough flour on the machine. Enough flour here on the machine. I might come around the other Actually, side. Actually, I want to be here this time because okay. I, I don't want to make mistakes again. <laughs> Vincenzo's getting stage fright. Yes. I'm live. It's not easy to be live, you know? Okay, let's go. <laughs> oh, look, oh, it's coming up. Come, oh, come, 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 come. I've got to have a look, I've got to have a look. Can you see how they're separated? Can you see that? Here we go. Can you see that? Yes. Oh, yeah, you can see that, yeah? Oh. So you just made spaghetti because you thought yes. I'd better show off after my mistake. Oh my God, this is showing off. <laughs> this is showing off. Look, they're all separated. Look at that. Look at that! Look, can I have a look? I'm showing off. Look. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. See, they're so not stuck good. together, they're separated. Just in case anyone was doubting you, huh? Oh yeah, <laughs> this is a proof that I can make pasta, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Even live. Can and fresh now, pasta be frozen? Yeah, we'll talk about that. Yeah, okay, absolutely. so this is what we do now. Well, we do the nesting. We do the nesting. <laughs> Just the nest. The nest. Sorry. Nobody's pregnant. <laughs> yeah, come on, look at the nest. Don't worry about me. Look at this. Here's the nest. I've done the nest and you didn't film it. Oh my god, I have to do it again now. No, no, it's it might get yeah. stuck together. Yeah. Here. <laughs> Here's the nest. Basically, you put your fingers like that. And twist. 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 You got the nest. Lots of flour. That's now great. you can pasta. freeze. Nonna normally freeze, but when she freezes the pasta, she actually likes to keep the pasta long like this on the baking paper and freeze it like this. Uh, but you can also make the nest. Yes, if it helps, you can make the nest and freeze the nest. I've done it. We do it many times. What you need to remember is when you freeze the pasta, when you go and cook the pasta. Your pasta needs to be cooked, boiled from frozen. Okay? You can't defrost the pasta, otherwise it becomes a mess. It, like terrible. You need to cook from frozen. But today, the pasta we're making today is fresh. 
and we are not going to freeze it. If you freeze it, you need to remember the first you want to freeze the pasta. And once the pasta is frozen, you can put it in a Ziploc bag if you want. Okay? Now let's cook this, Suzanne. Let's put some right. salt. Oh, look at that. How oh, beautiful. Yum. Do we need some salt and pepper there? Yes, we do. Who cleans up the mess? <laughs> what mess? There's no mess here. <laughs> Now oh. I want to make pasta for dinner. Here we go. Okay, I've got plenty of pepper. We put just a little bit of salt, guys, not too much. Just a little bit of salt. Perfect. Because we're adding pecorino romano, which is full of salt. Well, I mean, it's not salty, not full of salt. It's salty. All right, here we go. And now, this is very important when you boil pasta. Add one tablespoon of rock salt, okay? One tablespoon of rock salt, and the water must be boiling, okay? Boiling, boiling water, okay? I will bring the cannoli. Oh my gosh, everyone's coming over. <laughs> come, come. Here we go, the pecorino ready. Whoops, sorry. Pecorino ready, pistacchio, pesto ready. Beautiful. You want some f chili flakes? You can add chili flakes, up to you. What we need to do now is to boil this pasta, okay? So we just make tagliatelle, Suzanne? Yeah, well, it's up to you. Okay, the spaghetti can go in the freezer. We've got okay. more to make. All right, the pasta, let's see if the pasta is boiling. Yeah, pasta water is boiling. The sauce is almost ready. All right. This is what we do. Is that boiling enough? We can wait a little bit longer. But it's almost, it's almost ready. Okay, it's boiling. So, here we go with the fettuccine. Perfect. Is that enough for you and I? Eh? For yeah, it's time. perfect. Okay. Did he say pistacchio pesto? Yes, so earlier we made some pistacchio pesto, literally just with pistacchio, fresh, well, with pistacchio and extra virgin olive oil. And Vincenzo also made a beautiful uh, tomato, woo, and, a beautiful tomato sauce over here, just with um, plum tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, and garlic. This is what we do now, okay? This is what we do. We basically stir the pasta a little bit, so we the pasta can dense in the water. You see the starch, the flour is helping to create, you know, the starchy water. Here we've got the cherry tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes are pretty much ready. What I would suggest is squash the tomatoes. They use, they don't squash, squash them. So you get the sauce out. You want to get the sauce. Oh, you can't see the pasta dancing, Jasper. Okay, let's have a look. <laughs> at the, you want to see the pasta dancing. The pasta is dancing, look. What we do here, we do this and we add the pistachio. Oh, you're adding both. I thought you were going to do it separately. The pistachio? Yeah. I'm going I to put you were going to do a... Oh, I didn't know you were doing yeah, that. Yeah, I'm going to do it now. Um, actually, we can keep some in the fridge. I for, thought you were doing pistachio pesto and then a tomato sauce. No, no, together. Oh. Yeah, together. I didn't understand. We can do I'm that sorry. too. Sorry. Let's do this. Mix. I like the flavors. Well, this is the first time I do it, to be honest. It's the first time I do it, but what I like is I like the flavors of the pistachio combined with the cherry tomatoes. What we need now, you can add some basil if you have it. Um, we don't have any. Oh, we got basil on the, yeah, in the got garden. Fresh basil. But look at this cream that you created now. See this cream that you created? This is a combination of pistachio cream, extra virgin olive oil, garlic, and cherry tomatoes. Look how perfect it is. What more do you need? What else do you need? What else do you need? The pasta in there. Now. So, how long does the pasta take to cook? Pasta Oops. takes about three minutes to cook. But it is important, it is important that you taste. Now, get a mug of pasta water, come here. Oops, sorry. Mug of pasta water. Oh, I don't want the pasta, I just want the pasta water. I love pasta, I just want the pasta water. Just want a little bit of pasta water. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna try one fettuccine here, just to make sure it's cooked. Oh my god, it's so long. Oh my gosh, it's so long. I'm gonna break it in half. So good. Ooh. We need to know how long the egg pasta stays good in the fridge for. Oh, it's better in the freezer, isn't it's it? Better in the freezer. The fridge, I won't say more than one. I think on the same day, you have to use it. Let's try this one. Mm. Mm. My glass of wine is ready. Dente. Everyone's coming over. Buonissimo. Al dente Yum. perfetto. I love it. Egg pasta. 
you don't want to give out you don't want to keep it in the fridge for too long one day the maximum okay um freeze it nonna does all the time you freeze the pasta when you're ready to cook the pasta from frozen straight in the boiling water and it takes one extra minute like if it takes three minutes now it will take about four minutes very quick well wow, Gabor just made your chicken parmigiana oh how was it yeah <laughs> i'm very proud of that with burrata now this is what we do Actually, I'm going to come over there. It's easier. Come closer. Perfect. Woo. Let me put this down, otherwise... The... Oh! Look what I did. What did you do? I dropped tongue in there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm live, I'm live. <laughs> it's definitely live. Yes, it's very hot now. Okay, so this is what we do now. Almost there. Oh, yeah, almost there, guys. Almost there. Do you throw do you throw the pasta to the ceiling to know if it's ready? Oh no, please don't waste your <laughs> Just pasta. Just taste it. Please don't do mm. it. No. The ceiling doesn't need pasta. Okay. What we do now is we get the pasta. Yum. Tongs are very hot, by the way. Of course they uh, are, they're trying. <laughs> oh my god. I'm burning goodness. my fingers just for you guys because I love you. Put the pasta in there. Look how easy this lunch is, Suzanne. Huh? So easy. We're going to have a very yummy romantic lunch. Today we are going to have homemade gnocchi for dinner. Thanks to Vincenzo's videos, I learned how to do it. Oh, so good. Thank you. Enjoy. A little bit of pasta water. Not too much, just a little bit. Please send one of your aprons. Got to get those aprons back online. Yeah, we have to. By the way, guys, I've got um, t-shirts and merchandising on the website. You just need to go to vincenzosplay.com. There's a shop. Uh, shop. You can buy t-shirts, <laughs> you can buy anything so you like. It's actually fun. We've created it for you. I've got a famous t-shirt, which is a make your pasta you can't refuse. Now it's time to toss it. Do you, you want to hear a good comment? <laughs> yes. Are the tongs now al dente? <laughs> <laughs> they are. <laughs> okay, now let's go in the messy sink here. And look, let's toss a little bit. A little bit of tossing. Oh, I want to see you tossing. I want to see your face as you do it. Can he laugh? Will he be serious? Can he look at the camera and do it at the same time? <laughs> oh. oh, wow. Patrick's fa um, family are addicted to pasta carbonara now. Oh, I love pasta carbonara. Mm. I thought my belly is carbonara. <laughs> look at that. All right, let me have a look. Look at this pasta. Look at this pasta. Just let focus me see on the this. pasta. Just focus, just focus on this. Look how beautiful pasta. Look how beautiful that is. Just please stay focused on that. I want everyone to look. Stay still on that. I want everyone to look at this beauty. At this beauty. Look at that. Hmm? You tell me that you don't want to have a plate of this wonderful pasta right now. Come on, I don't believe you. Hmm? Let's toss a little bit more. Can you flip with your left hand? I almost didn't want to ask. All right, let's do this oh, challenge. No. Let's do this challenge. Come on, let's Can do this I challenge. Can I come over here? Let's do this challenge. Can I do it with my left hand? Okay, wait. Let's ready? See. Wait, wait, wait. Let me get you in the shot. All right, let's, let's go. See. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can. Oh, you can. A little bit. Oh, yeah. the floor. A little bit slower, but you can. You can do it faster. Oh, no. You know what is missing, guys? See, I'm confusing you. I'm doing these challenges. The pecorino. Come on, let's put the pecorino inside. Come here. Let's put the pecorino inside. Oh, Oops, sorry. Pecorino, baby. Pecorino. I might need to put a little bit more extra. Pasta water, so I've been uh, staring too much. I watched one of your videos earlier today about how you don't add cream to Alfredo. Tried it your way, and it came out delicious. Right, look at that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Can well, we move over somewhere? <laughs> look at this. Okay, now you're just showing off, and I can't get over to you because I think the pasta is going to fall on my land on my face. Actually, I think I'm better with the left. Okay, thanks, Vincenzo. You want to try it? <laughs> I like the left. <laughs> Let's get a plate. Cheeky, cheeky. Am I going to show off? Yeah, let's show off, Suzanne. Let's show off. What do you mean? I'm going to use the... Oh, the tongs. <laughs> tong. Michelin star tong. <laughs> it's amazing how underutilized pasta water is. Absolutely. And it's so simple. Look what we do now. Look doesn't cost you the best ingredient. It doesn't cost you a thing. Got a big, how do you call this? Big tweezers. Big oh, uh, yeah, they're like um, yeah, the tweezers, exactly. And here we go. Put it in the plate. Oh, 
I need a spoon. Looks delicious. I shower in pasta water. <laughs> <laughs> you must taste delicious. That's the best comment of the day after that. Oh my god. Best gosh. comment of the day. <laughs> best comment of the day. Oh. The pasta looks so good, brother, from your mate in Peakhurst. Oh, it's Kevin. Hey, Kevin, how are oh, you? Wow. I miss you, Kevin. I miss you. How's the family? Here, Kevin, this is for you. Look at this sauce. I'm going to put sauce everywhere here. Look at this beautiful sauce. Come and have a look. Look at this beautiful sauce here. Look at that. Suzanne, this lunch is going to be sensational. Sensational. That's why he made them so long. <laughs> now, do we need more pecorino, Suzanne? Yeah, why not? Of course. Mm -hmm. Pecorino? You're talking to me. More pecorino everywhere. And here's how you have pasta done in no time. Have a look. So you make pasta. With this dough, we created a delicious pasta with just cherry tomatoes and pistachio. I had, I had food that was about to go off. Okay, it was not off yet. It wasn't off. It was no, just but, super you know, ripe tomatoes. Super ripe tomatoes. The pistachio. Okay, maybe you can food, try it. You know? So, how good is that? Can you please tell me if you like it? If you focus on this, you know, take a photo of this? We can take a photo. Come on, we can take a photo. I think you can just eat it. The photo will be of the screenshot of how it tastes. I'm eating it. Parmesan and pecorino, two different cheeses. Absolutely. I don't, I'm, I don't want to touch this plate. I'm going to eat straight from there. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to cut it away from me. I like to eat in the pan. Looks delicious. Look at this. Looks amazing, dog. <laughs> I learned to make pasta from your channel. Oh, please do these more often. We will, we will. We're going yeah. to start doing them every week. Every week at the same time. Every oh, so It's Friday here in Sydney. It's Thursday everywhere else in the world. We do it every Friday, guys. So next Friday, stay tuned because we are making uh, an Italian meal under $10, okay? We do something very easy. We're making frittata e spaghetti agli olio. Time to eat? Time to eat. E e ora si mangia. Vincenzo's place. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Very delicate. The pistachio cream, Suzanne, or pesto, it's there to give it a kick. But the tomatoes are also very predominant. They're very there telling you, hey, I am the king here to the pesto. But the pesto is saying, okay, can I be your assistant? So we got the king, the tomatoes, really taking over. The pesto giving assistance, you know, making the tomato taste better. And this fresh pasta, oh. And don't forget the pecorino. That pecorino, mmm. <laughs> that pecorino is such an important touch. If you add chopped pineapple to that pasta, I will give you a thousand euros. <laughs> you give me a million dollars, I won't do it. No, exactly. No, no, no I don't <laughs> sell my soul. <laughs> money is nothing. Food is better than money. Mmm. Yum, yum, yum. Mmm. Mmm. Yum. Really, really yummy. Really yummy, really nice, different. Again, it's not a classic. This is how creative you can be. This is creativity. I opened the fridge. This is what I found, and I like it. If I had cream fresh, I was not going to use cream fresh anyway. Yum! Thank you so much. Because it doesn't belong to pasta cream fresh. No pineapple. <laughs> no pineapple. I've got t-shirts on the website. No pineapple on pizza. <laughs> Get one and tell everyone not to add pineapple on pizza. Where can I get one of those aprons? Mm. We'll make an announcement once we have them. Well, they're just out of stock, so unfortunately they're not going to arrive in time for the holiday season. But once they're back in stock, we'll announce it on our on our Facebook. Account. I am, Suzanne, I'm really, really... Squeezy? Door. Surprised of the amazing taste. Now, I don't know if we I need to create a YouTube video, a video recipe, Suzanne, and cook this pasta, the Vincenzo's plate, vegetarian pasta. Maybe. And maybe we can turn a new Alfredo. We can create a new Alfredo. We call but it's it not Alfredo. The Vincenzo sauce. Exactly. The Vincenzo pasta made with less than $5 with whatever I had in the fridge. So what do you think of creating, uh, giving a name to this pasta? We call it the Vincenzo sauce, the Vincenzo's pasta. Do you like it? Please tell me, because if you do, 
I think I'm creating a new Alfredo. Yeah. And when you stop eating Alfredo, that's where we are. The new way. <laughs> with cherry tomatoes and pistachio paste. Everyone's saying, let me have a bite. Don't worry, I'll have some. Have a look, have a look, have a look. Have a look from above. Have a look from above. Is it beautiful? It is beautiful. Mm -hmm. You like it? Looks delicious. Yeah, I like it too. So now this is for you. Hi, I hope you had a wonderful birthday, Vincenzo. Thank you very much. Thank you, yeah. Kevin's going to make this tomorrow. Kevin, it's so easy, oh, <laughs> so good. Evelyn's very sweet. Maybe you can call it Suzanne's pasta. Okay, <laughs> Suzanne gets a credit. If she writes the book, oh. if she writes the book, Suzanne will get this pasta with her name on it, okay? That's the deal, Suzanne. You write a book and you get the... Put it in the book. <laughs> we put it in the book, yeah. So, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you join us every week, same time, um, every Friday for us, Thursday for you. And I hope you, you enjoy it. So next week we make frittata and spaghetti agli olio. A meal that is, costs under $10, or maybe under $5. Very cheap. Thank you so much. I love you all. I need to eat now. We need to open the wine. And we need to enjoy a romantic lunch, Suzanne. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much and love you all. Bye YouTube, bye Facebook. We are live on YouTube and Facebook. Bye Thank everyone you. on YouTube. Bye. I love you and see you soon. And on Sunday I'm sharing 